Hi everybody, our story is called Little Red's Autumn Adventure, and that's the title of our story, and this is the front cover of our story. This is the title page, Little Red's Autumn Adventure. It was a splendid autumn afternoon at Buttercup Cottage. Little Red and her friends were on their way to the Great Harvest Festival in Bluebell Wood. They kicked up the golden leaves as they went along, humming a jolly tune. What a whiz of a windy day, cried Little Blue excitedly. Look at all the leaves. A giant oak leaf floated down past them. Gino jumped to catch it. I know, said Little Red, clapping her hands. Let's do a bit of leaf boarding. Everyone rushed to gather up the biggest leaves they could find, and then they scampered to the top of the hill. What do you think leaf boarding is? Wait for me, called Roni as the others all went zooming past. I'll never find a leaf that's my size, she sniffed. Oh, look, that's leaf boarding. They're sliding down the hill on a leaf. Little Red jumped off her leaf board. Don't worry, dear old Roni, she said as she reached for her sack of smiles. Then, with a teeny sprinkling of magic dust, she turned a tiny leaf into a Roni-sized leaf board. Off Roni sped with a happy neigh, and Little Red dashed off to catch up with the others. What does this say? Whee! Do you think you could go leaf boarding? Um, I think there might be a big problem with that. Suddenly, Little Red's leaf hit a rather large tuft of grass. Bumpity bump, bumpity whoops! And she went tumbly tumble head over heels and landed at the foot of a big blackberry bush. Whoopsie, Little Red laughed as she untangled herself. Just then, she heard the teeniest of squeak squeaks coming from under the blackberries. Mommy, said a very small voice. Little Red knelt down to have a look. Peering out from the shadows of the leaves, Two tiny mice clung to each other. Uh-oh, what do you think has happened to them? Eek! They squeaked, jumping back and gripping each other all the more tightly. Don't worry, said Little Red in her sweetest, kindest voice. Voice, I'll help you. But you're so big, peeped one of the tiny mouse. And scary, whispered the other. So Little Red reached into her sack of smiles, grabbed a handful of magic dust, sprinkled it overhead, and zippity doo da! she shrunk right down to the size of the tiny mice. There, that's better, she said. Now, tell me whatever is the matter. Do you have any idea what's wrong? We can't find our mommy, squeaked the tiny mice. We were on our way to the harvest festival, and we were playing hide-and-seek with the butterflies, but then they flew away, and we were lost. I'm sure your mommy isn't far, said Little Red. Come on, we'll find her together. But when Little Red reached down for her sack of smiles, it was gone. Oh, my goodness. Did you see what happened to it? Hmm, I don't know what happened to it. Then she remembered, there, high above their heads, the sack of smiles hung from the brambles. Oh, snaggaroo, she said to herself. However will I find Mommy Mouse now? And how will I reach my sack of smiles? Little Red smiled her bravest smile. Don't worry, little ones, follow me. And she whistled a merry song as she set off on the long journey to the Harvest Festival. Do you have any idea how she's going to get her sack of smiles down? 
Meanwhile, little Blue, Gino, and Roni had arrived at the clearing where the festival was nearly ready to begin. It was quite a sight indeed. Here, there, and everywhere, the animals were frantically making the final preparations. Blakesley Bill was directing the robins as they strung lanterns from the trees. Purdy was scurrying to and fro, setting up the band. There were towering tables brimming with all sorts of tasty treats. Roni licked her lips. Wait till Little Red sees this. But when they looked around, Little Red was nowhere to be seen. Mm. Just then, Mrs. Mouse came rushing up to Roni, winging her apron in dis wringing her apron in distress. Oh, dearie me, she cried. I've lost two of my children. They're always running off, and I had my hands full with the plum pie. Oh, please, can you help me? Little Blue looked at Roni. Roni looked at Little Blue. Little Red would know what to do, but where on earth was she? The sun was setting, and long purple shadows were already stretching across the grass. They were very worried indeed. I think, said Roni, I think we should make a search party. The friends hadn't been searching for long when thunk. An acorn landed squarely in the middle of Little Blue's bumblebee bobble hat. Ouch, said Little Blue, and he looked up. Purdy, he said slowly, what color do the leaves turn in the autumn? Why, you know that, Little Blue. They turned red and gold and orange. Everyone looked up to where Little Blue was pointing, his mouth wide open in astonishment. <gasps> Do you see it? Do you see it? Up above, the leaves on the trees had turned every splendiferous color in the rainbow. There were pink leaves and blue leaves, spotty leaves and stripy leaves. The friends couldn't believe their eyes. Then Little Blue spied someone, a very mischievous someone. That means they're kind of naughty and get in trouble. High on the branches, gripped tightly in his paws, was... What is that? Little red sack of smiles. The magic dust was spilling here, there, and everywhere, mixing up the colors of the leaves. You naughty squirrel, said Little Blue. Come back down here and give us, the ba give us back the sack of smiles. But the squirrel just chattered and tittered and scurried even further up the tree trunk. Realizing that something needed to be done and fast, Little Blue bent down and pinched a bit of the magic dust between his fingers. Then, reaching his arm over his head, he sprinkled the dust onto his bumblebee bobble hat, saying, Buzzy Bee, carry me! All at once, the bumblebee bobble started to spin and buzz, and before the friends knew it, Little Blue was lifted up off the ground. Up, up, up he flew, right to the tops of the trees, until he was eye to eye with the naughty squirrel. In a flash, Little Blue snatched back the sack of smiles. This belongs to Little Red. Where did you find it? Little Blue demanded to know. Why, just down there, giggled the squirrel, pointing to a blackberry bush. Little Blue sounded the alarm on his trumpet and yelled, Little Red! Little Red! Can you hear me? Down below, Little Red heard the trumpet and Little Blue's cry. Now, Tiny Mice, she said, I need you to shout as loud as you can. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Here, Little Blue, they all cried. We're over here by the spotty toadstool. From the top of his tree, Little Blue heard the faint squeaks of the three lost friends. And without wasting a second, he buzz, buzz, buzz down to the spot where they were sheltering. Oh, well done, Little Blue. You found us, said Little Red. Now sprinkle me with the tiniest bit of magic dust. So Little Blue closed his eyes, reached into the sack of smiles, and zazing! Little Red sprang back up to her jolly old self. Oh, thank heavens, Little Red laughed and gave Little Blue an enormous hug. Everyone was overjoyed, most of all, Mrs. Mouse and her nine tiny mice. Oh my goodness, she has nine little mice.
And when at last the friends finally reached the festival, they had a wonderful time dancing and singing under the great harvest moon long into the night. Oh my goodness, that was quite an adventure, Little Red had, wasn't it? Yes, just think if you had some, a bag of smiles with some special dust, what would you do with it? All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.